It's uh, like five something in the morning. Um, I've been up for a while, getting ready for work, got my Starbucks. Um, the colors aren't as pretty as they used to be, but on my drive here I had a gorgeous view, and so I'm going to try and show you what the sky looked like. So it looked a lot like that, and except it had a lot more pink in it, and it was absolutely gorgeous, and it's hard to see that now, because now the sun's getting a little too high, but it was super beautiful, and you could see Mount St. Helens and Mount Hood, and it was gorgeous, and that is the hidden beauty of the Pacific Northwest and waking up super early on a Monday morning for work. Anyway, I'm gonna take you with me to the San Juan Islands this week um, to see some of the gorgeous things that I get to see as part of my job, even though it's sometimes exhausting. <laughs> so, hope you enjoy everything. Hi everyone, it's Erin, and on my phone here is Eric. Uh, this is my break at work and so um, right now we're at American Camp on San Juan Island and I had a little time so I called Eric who's on this phone which you can't see that's okay though um, but I <laughs> he's saying hi uh, and uh, oh I can put him on speakerphone yeah say hi again you're on speaker hi <laughs> That's Eric. Hi everyone. <laughs> um, and so this, whoa, let's let this adjust. This is American Camp that I am walking into right now. Sorry, I'll try and not make it too bouncy. Um, it's really beautiful. It's a gorgeous day today. Normally American Camp is like really gloomy. A lot of people like hated it here. We're really sad all the time because the weather was really bad, um, but it's actually a beautiful day. And you can see in front of us like the American flag, and those are kind of like the parade grounds. And it's really nice because if we walk a little further, I'll show you how they have this gorgeous view over the ocean. Um, but they're in this little prairie area right on like a bluff um, by the ocean, and so. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool place when the weather's nice, but in the winters it was pretty awful. So, I'll walk over so you guys can see the view of the ocean. This, um, house right here has to do with the laundress quarters. It says, outside the building, women slashed their hands in tubs filled with hot, soapy water, washing soldiers' dirty clothes, dirty, soldiers' dirty clothes while children played nearby. Once the threat of war was averted, an American camp was well established. Soldiers' families and civilians and civilian personnel began arriving at camp. Civilian women served in roles like camp laundresses, a duty that required being married to a soldier. The U.S. Army gave each laundress a daily rotation, and soldiers paid them a dollar a month for their services. As many as three different post laundresses uh, lived here at one time. That was from 1859 to 1872. Frontier Army laundresses dressed plainly in long skirts, blouses, full aprons, and large bonnets for weather protection. If you look, the ocean's right out there. So they had this gorgeous view of the ocean while doing soldier's laundry. Kind of ironic. Um, but pretty neat at the same time.
when they, you'll see them come up and they're like really hard with their back really high. That means Yeah, that was cool. Oh, wow. Watch that thing. So right now, we are on a whale boat and we are looking for orcas and we found some. You can see their dorsal fins off in the distance there. Uh, by law, we have to remain a certain amount of distance away. Um, of course, if the, able, if the orcas come closer to our boat, then there's nothing we can do about it um, other than cut the engine. But um, we want to remain a safe distance to kind of respect their, their space. So I'm going to try and get some footage of them. It's kind of a, a cloudy day too, so... Oh, there's one. So this is uh, part of my job and what I get to do with kids um, and it's really awesome that I get to do this and see these things all the time and last time we were on the boat um, there were just so many orcas there's a whole pod around us and at one point I got to go to the back of the boat it was just like me and a co-worker and there was a mom and a baby that were just like swimming by and we just got to enjoy their presence and it was really wonderful. So no one else was at the back of the boat with us at the time. They designed with like 1902. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They capped up the lines of the boat on one line? side of the uh, boat. Those people are really lucky on that boat. Those orcas are so Curious close to them. Like right up on that. Just so cool to see these magnificent creatures that are so big. Um, in the water, just in their natural environment. Yeah. There you are. But the only thing kind of keep the water out, it's like having kind of a super rare out a Yeah. Because if they would think someone else is talking, and it might alter their behavior. Birds out. Yeah, Whoa. three at okay, once. Is there a male orca in that group? Ooh, yeah. yeah. No. Hopefully no one's getting seasick yeah. How close watching are this video. Oh, oh, what is the closest? Oh yeah. That's the footage I wanted. I love uh, getting footage of this so I can remember it for the rest of my life. Sometimes it's nice to just sit back and enjoy the view. So I'm getting a little boat sick from looking through a camera. <laughs> oh, there's that big dorsal again. This is my life, this is my job, this is what I do, and it's awesome, and I love it. Also, I get to be really excited about this with kids all the time. We're on a boat that's moving, and so it's hard to have a steady camera when you're on something that moves. One of the beers that get, can get close yeah. to the Watch Dramamine before watching this video. I mean, watch Dramamine. Yeah. Take Dramamine. <laughs> well, we are at Lime Kiln State Park, and let me make sure this uh, this lens is clean here. It's just a little smudgy. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we're at Lime Kiln State Park on San Juan Island, and we're going to go tide pooling this morning uh, with all the kids. And tide pooling is my favorite thing because it's something I did a lot in college, and I feel like that's what I'm most knowledgeable about. But also, there's just so much life in this very unique ecosystem of an area that is half exposed and half not exposed during the day um, and it's always changing and so that's uh, pretty neat to me and so it's really neat to see the different amounts of diversity in the water because of that. Also we're going to visit Dr. Bob at the uh, lighthouse so I'll show you some, some footage hopefully. See right there, there's a line kite. All of uh, these little green circles over here that kind of look like donuts, these are all little green anemones.
Okay, so this is true uh, coralline algae over here that I found now. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful. Nice pink color. Um, and it also has this encrusting stage. So all that pink stuff growing on the rock is its encrusting stage. And so um, the encrusting stage is the haploid stage. And then the plant is the diploid stage. And so they have a really complex uh, reproductive cycle. But it's actually really interesting if you ever get into that. Also, there's some limpets in here. And uh, there's these other like little red things that I don't know what they are. Um, they're pretty cool looking and they add some more like color and texture to these tadpoles, which is pretty neat. The hermit crab is pretty blending in right now. Um, but yeah. Okay everyone, so we just got back from taking the trash out and we have a raccoon problem here. And so we got back and Larry the raccoon is uh, on the table and so now I'm approaching camp to show you the madness as a uh, as a uh, Max is hurling logs at raccoons and trees. Oh, that is not very clear. Let's get a little closer. So we put uh, bleach in the peanut butter jar to try and uh, get the raccoons to feel feel our our love for them because that's literally what it's like. <laughs> Probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen was he just shot putting a block. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah, straight he... back from the blue. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Climb, oh. climb it. So our raccoon friend. They're gonna be back now. No, don't call him our friend. <laughs> oh, he's not a friend. It's climbing up this tree, but you can't really see. Use this dark. Oh wait, you can see something moving, maybe. He's in there. <laughs> we don't like him. I think he might have gone around the side. Yeah. Anyway, he's up there. We'll get him but I can hear him coming from everywhere. And we have a raccoon that's coming down from this tree. He what thinks he's safe. What if here's all this one's climbing down? This is all up and it's a trap. <laughs> They're working together. I know, I can you hear him in the horse you. tails. Don't get distracted, Max. You only have one shot. I don't know what I'm 